Today I want to talk about warfare prayer. How many of you know that prayer is vital for spiritual warfare? Right? That's what the Bible teaches us. You have to, you have to go to battle. And isn't it amazing that the enemy always tries to distract you? Whenever you're, de- you're determined to get into prayer, you're determined to get away. Uh, I've learned I can't bring my phone because the notification. Brr, brr, Satan's like, pick that up. Pick that up. That's how he talks. Pick that one up. That's important that you take that call. You're going to say, just be quiet. Shut up in Jesus' name. Right? But, but it's so important. When Israel was about to be released out of slavery into the promised land, what did Pharaoh do? He heaped on more work for them. Moses said, I just, our, we just want to go out and celebrate with the Lord. And he kept binding them and stopping them and getting in the way. That, that's a macro uh, idea of how Satan attract, attacks at a national, a nation level. By the way, the, the enemy is trying to attack, attack our nation. We're going to go to prayer for our nation on a big level. He's trying to attack you individually. You're single here today, and you feel, you feel uh, like, like you just you know, maybe feel so discontented and unhappy because you're, you have a single status. I'm here to tell you the enemy is trying to get you to think that you're just not complete. Let me tell you, you're complete in Christ Jesus. You have, an, you have a very unique position right now and a status. God, you you want to know? You want to know who made the biggest impact on the world? His name is Jesus. Jesus was single. So don't ever think that you're less than and you're not part of. Uh-uh, that's a lie from hell. God is going to use you for his kingdom right now in big ways. You just get connected to him in prayer and you let him, let, let him do some mighty work. We're counting on you. We need you. The kingdom needs you. Uh, if you're married, the enemy's going to try to attack and say, she's not good enough. He should be better. Why isn't he this? Why isn't she that? I, you know, I'm, I'm just really building a resentment against my husband or wife. And, and I, I just, I feel justified. I, I, I don't even want to forgive. I don't even want to believe that we can get in a better place. The enemy is working. He never stops working. You need to experience some warfare prayer and say, enough of that. I'm content in Christ. I love my wife. I love my husband. I speak blessing to them. I honor them. God, we pray for a miracle. Gail, do you think that Gail and I, because we're pastors, that we have some perfect thing going on? Praise God. Thank you for not thinking that. <laughs> right? But here's what we did. We just did it the other night. The enemy, if he can strike the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. Do you, think that, do you not think that th- there's always attempts? So we, we just, we, we sat up in bed. We were praying. We had the word of God open. And we commanded every dark force to, to stay away from this marriage and this home. And we got very specific and very detailed. And you know what? You could feel the lifting of that in the spirit realm. And there's never a time when we can drift away from intimacy with Christ. There's never a time that we should not be vigilant or diligent. It doesn't mean at all. It doesn't mean anxiety whatsoever at all. You can be in perfect peace and do some spiritual warfare because you know that the Prince of Peace is with you and he's gonna destroy the destroyer in your life. Amen? So, warfare prayer. We're going to look at it in three ways. Uh, First, we'll read the scripture. Open, please, to Ephesians chapter 6. Just after he gave all of the, uh, the armor of God, he then says this in verse 18, and this is where we'll spend all of our time today. Here we go. Are you ready? You ready in the balcony? You guys ready in the balcony? Okay, you got, everybody's ready. Here we go. Balcony people, we love you. Um, Praying at, oh, yeah, here we go. Praying at all times in the Spirit. Now, every time the word all comes up, I'd like to all of us say it, okay? All right, y'all? Y'all ready to say y'all? Y'all? Okay. So here we go. Praying at times in the Spirit with prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with perseverance, making supplication for the saints. That's it. That's the Scripture. You can keep it up if you would. Um, So at all times, in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. Supplication, by the way, there's all kinds of prayers, but supplication specifically is where you go to God for your requests. Everyone say requests. Now then, I don't know why in Massachusetts I meet so many people that they don't believe that you can pray for yourself. 
That's hysterical. It's all in the Bible. Somehow you got the idea. I, I have people, they brag about it. They go, well, you know, I don't pray for myself. You're not supposed to do that. And I'm going, what book of the Bible do you get that from? Is that the book of heresy? I mean, because that's a heresy. No, God wants, God cares about you. He is your heavenly father. You are his son or daughter. He, the whole thing is a father that wants to be reconnected with his kids. That's what the gospel's all about. And Jesus made a way for you to come boldly before the throne of your father and, and to receive help and mercy and grace in your time of need. Do you know that? The door is open, wide open. You know, my door is always open for my children. And I include, I don't call them in-laws. They're, they're my children. I have 10 of them. Always open. My grand, always open. Right? And, and so that's God with you. Doors open, wide open. And he's, it grieves God's heart when we don't come, to, come, come around him. Because he loves you. How many of you are just, just love to be, you just love to be there when the kid comes to you? I don't care, it doesn't have to be your kid, it can be any. I love it when I can connect. God just loves it, and he misses us when we're not connecting. That's, see, religion gets it all whacked out. It becomes all ritualistic, kind of cold as ice, just a whole bunch of rules. Gets down to this. We were separate, separated and alienated from God our Father uh, from, because of our sin. God so loved you that he gave Jesus Christ because he wasn't okay with you being separated and alienated and at enmity with, him, with you. God gave Jesus. Jesus willingly did the works that his father told him to do. He obeyed the father. He went and together along with the Holy Spirit, they secured you so that you could become children of God through these two ways. By receiving John chapter 1 verse 14, whoever, whoever believes and receives this gift of Christ. Whoever receive, believes and receives, they have been given the right to become children of God. That's what you are. So that's what it's all about. You, you have, so he wants you to make supplication in our own vernacular. He wants you to make requests. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. So we're gonna look at uh, four things. Um, we're gonna talk about praying at all times, number one, praying with all prayers, number two. Praying, number three, with all perseverance. And number four, praying for all saints. And I mean all the saints. Now, not that you have to go around the globe and have a list of two billion people. You couldn't do that in a lifetime. But that you just kind of, by the way, all kind of, the, the word all here, if you look in the Greek, it basically means some of all types. Because otherwise, would would you know talk about giving the pastor giving you anxiety? I mean, you got to pray for all people in the whole globe, every single person by name. You'd be like, ah, no, just as the Lord leads, you pray for you pray at all times, you pray all kinds of prayers with all perseverance for all the saints. You got it? Okay, let's go home. No, let's talk, let's talk about it. at all times, at all times. What does that mean? So, I don't know about you, but I. I throw up prayers all the time. I just throw them out. Because when you're in constant communion with the Lord through Christ, because the door's wide open, and we have so much gratitude for Jesus Christ, the high priest, and the sacrifice. He's the Lamb of God that made a way. Um, all times, you're kind of thinking, as you go along, thinking you're, you're connected to God. Um, and then when you think a thought, because you're so aware of the presence of God, that doesn't belong. You take that thought captive. You, you confess it. And you say, Lord, forgive me for allowing that thought to become more than a temptation. I've kind of messed with it a little too long. Look, the Father says, I forgive you for that. My son bled and died for that. But get back into communion with me. So you just get right back. So you're thinking, um, almost your thoughts are like prayers. You're throwing up a little prayer to God as along the way. And, and by the way, don't think that you praying at all times mean, means that you go around, you know, in your neighborhood and uh, you're casting out all the demons right out loud. You're screaming to God. You're yelling at God. You know, that at work, you're supposed to be doing a job and you're like, in Jesus' name, God told me to pray all the time. I don't have time for this job. Just send me a paycheck. And I'm praying right now for you, boss. Boss, you need Jesus because you're a mess. You're an awful boss. And we, we don't, we're just constantly reminding ourselves that I'm connected to the Lord in our thoughts, 
How about this one? In our attitudes, our, our attitude can be offered to God as a prayer because we say, God, I want my attitude to be one of love for people, faith in you, that you're with me. And, and so our attitudes are a, a form of prayer. But, but of course, we just need to pray. And I'm gonna talk about all kinds of, of prayer. But at all times, we're just so mindful of, of, of that. And then it says, pray at all times in the spirit. Right? In the spirit. In the spirit. Now, I wanna give you some examples of, of me praying, you know, some at different times in my life, and I thought, how appropriate would it be to tell you a little history of the church? It's 21, going on 22 years now. That must mean that I'm getting old. I mean, it's rough, and now that I'm in my 40s, it's been a little... <laughs> Don't look at me in that tone of voice, church. Um, so the whole thing started with prayer. I had been serving in another church for nine years, and um, I... It, you know, I knew that at some point I'm probably going to be a lead pastor, but I was serving with contentment. Certainly there were times of discontentment, but I just put that to rest because God could never move you forward on discontentment. You know that. So those times that I f- did feel discontent when I wanted to get ahead of myself and ahead of God, I just said, forgive me, Lord. I just lay that down, and I, I found contentment. But I was very content at this time, and I was serving under David Wilson at New Hope Chapel. We had a campus in Marshfield, and then we had a campus that was very instrumental in leading the way at Rockland. So we're at Rockland. We're there a few years, I think. Kim and Carl were there with us. They've been with us since the beginning, since uh, Kim is Gail's sister and Carl is our brother-in-law, but they, we, they've always been with us in our vision. And so Carl came along and said one day, I think we were, it, it feels like we were in the gymnasium at the church, right? We got that, right? And he said, and I thought I heard him say, I had a dream, but he said, I believe that God is calling uh, you to plant a church. Do you want to give it in your own words? Is that basically right? Yeah, I believe. So I thought he said he dreamt it. So I said, Carl, I got a question for you. What's that? What did you eat? What did you have? Did you eat too much pizza last night? You're hearing these voices. You know, you're seeing these things. That was a wise guy remark, but he looked at me. He didn't appreciate it because he was serious. That look, bro, really spoke volumes. So then Matt Fiorenza, another guy, said, I I had a vision and you were, they're not talking to each other, by the way. He said, I had a vision that you were behind a pulpit and it was your church. It was the church you were leading. I'm going, oh, really? And then another guy, Mike Kennedy, and it happened about three or four times, different people, different, same thing. So I go, well, this sounds like God. Seems like the confirmation is there, but I'm not gonna tell God what I'm doing. If he's gonna do something, it's gonna come through prayer. So what we did, it was like, at, I think at times it was six in the morning, sometimes seven on Monday mornings, we met at Kim and Carl's house in Bryantville. I gathered all those guys that had dreams and visions and words. I said, you come with me, let's pray. We'll just let, see what God does. As we prayed, God began to develop a strong desire for us to go to Plymouth, so, you know, the psalm says, which, which one is it? 37, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Which one is it? 37, see, I, I knew I was right. I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you desires. Here's the thing, and this is really good for you. Some of you have not stepped into your ultimate purpose yet. This is really good for you. You see, prayer, prayer, it's called, I wanna call it warfare prayer because the enemy does not want you to live out your purposes. He will pull out all the stops to keep you from living the life that Christ has for you. So prayer, when you're intimate with the Lord in prayer, you're delighting yourself in him, not what he has to give you, but in him. That's the object, the goal of our life. The Westminster Catechism, right? To to glorify God with all we do and to enjoy him forever. Don't you just enjoy God Wasn't worship just so enjoyable today? Just so good. That's called delighting yourself in the Lord. He's so delighted with you. Do you know the Bible says he sings over you in Habakkuk? You're not only singing to him. He sings over you. Devil doesn't want you to hear that. He looks at you and he just sings a song. You make him sing. 
Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you, he will give you desires in your heart, of your heart. Not, oh, God's going to give me every desire I ever had. Boy, imagine if every desire you ever had, God gave you, your life would be a mess. Those desires that come in, no, it's his desires that he gives you, and they become your desires. This is what happens in prayer. So warfare, because the enemy's trying to steal your life, he's trying to steal your legacy, he's trying, listen, you just delight, and it doesn't matter what's happened in the past. The past is the past. Paul said, forgetting what is behind, I press on to what is ahead. And that's a word for someone here. I know the Holy Spirit told me, you press on to what lies ahead. You have to move away from the past and step into what lies ahead because something really good lies ahead for you. Warfare prayer is when you pray at all times and you delight yourself in the Lord. He gives you the desire. So we're delighting in the Lord. The desire comes. It can't, I can't shake it. Gail and I would, on date night, would just say, where do you want to go? Let's go to Plymouth. Let's go to Isaac's. Let's go to East. Let's go here. Let's go, let's go to Plymouth. It's always, she goes, don't you have any other unique ideas? Plymouth, Plymouth. While we're on a date, I'd say, hey, let's do a prayer walk down the sidewalk. All right, and she was always so willing. We would pray, Plymouth, 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 Plymouth for Jesus, Plymouth for Christ, Plymouth for Christ. Um, and so uh, we prayed that prayer. And then we found out that there was another prayer team in Plymouth. They had been praying for two years. All they needed now was a pastor. The, the week that God released us was the week that they, us not knowing this, They actually quit their assignments in the churches they were serving faithfully at, said, we believe, this is before they knew about us, we believe that God is going to start the church now. So the three of them said, we're going to to release our our ministries there and get somebody else because we're about to start a church. And then I called Susan uh, McMahon and I said, we're going to start a church in Plymouth. Can we use your house for Bible studies? And then the, that group found out we're starting a church and everybody was freaking out in joy. And then the two groups became one big, bigger prayer group. Remember, we used to go Friday nights to the Freire's house and we would just, everything we do was pray, 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 pray. We didn't have all but, we had a guitarist and a drummer. The first Sunday we started, it was April 2nd, April 7th, 2002. We only had a patchwork of people. We had a, a lead guitarist and, and uh, a drummer, Bobby Barrows and Mike. That was pretty much our whole. We would go to prayer every Friday. Lord, we need, uh, the, the drummer had to leave, so we need a drummer, Lord. We need a keyboard player. So one of, our, one of the ladies that was in our church, she goes to Stop and Shop, I think it was. She meets this lady, finds out she's a Christian. What do you, oh, oh tell me about you guys. Well, I'm a keyboard player and my husband's a drummer. And, and we're looking for a church. And then all of a sudden, next week, we had another keyboard and a drummer. Every week we did that. Every week we did that. Prayer, 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 prayer. Because God, God's like, come to me. Come to me. I want you in my presence. And that you need to be in my presence. That's where things happen. It's about a relationship with God. Pray at all times. Why in the Spirit? Why do we need to pray in the Spirit? We press in, right? Martin Lord Jones Jones says this. Listen to this wise, amazing man of God. He said, the secret of true prayer is in the Spirit. Vain repetitions, merely uttering words out of a habit of custom is not praying. He says, praying in the Spirit means being concentrated and submitted to the Spirit so that he creates, he directs, He orders, he empowers praying. So when you pray in the Spirit, you are aligning yourself with God the Holy Spirit who also is interceding for you. Do you know that the Holy Spirit intercedes for you? How many of you knew that? The Holy Spirit. Now, not only the Holy Spirit is interceding, Jesus himself is interceding for you. All right? Uh, Romans 8, 3, 1 John 2, 1, Hebrews 7, 25. It says that Jesus is making intercession for us. Remember when Peter said, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna deny you. Not me, everybody else maybe, but not me. Oh, really? Jesus said to Peter, before the rooster crows, you'll be denying me three times. <laughs> three times he denied him. But Jesus said, Satan, does, watch this, this is for you. 
Satan desires to sift you as wheat, Peter. But he says, but I'm praying for you. And when you are restored, come and encourage the brothers. You think that God's done with you because you failed him? Really? That's a lie from hell. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how far you've sunk. I don't care. Listen, how, do you, how would it feel to deny Jesus? Like you were in the inner three circle. You denied him. You said, I do not know him. Yeah, that's pretty, that, it's the, the Bible says Peter went away and wept bitterly. Maybe some of you are weeping bitterly over your past. Come to the cross, come to Christ. Get saved, get forgiven, get redeemed. Let Jesus' blood pour out. There's, there's a, a shower, a fountain of blood that'll never run dry. You can always be forgiven. You can always move forward. Now is the time. Step into it. Warfare prayer is what we need, and Jesus is praying for you already, and so isn't the Holy, the Holy Spirit. Watch this. Romans 8, 15 and 16 says... You did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. So many people are afraid because they're in religion. This is a former, they relied upon the law and they all broke the law and that just brought about fear because we all know we have, God has put eternity in our hearts. Every person has eternity in their hearts. Even though they say, I'm an atheist, there's no God, I'm gonna die, go in the dirt and worms are gonna eat me. Nope, they don't, nope, there's something There's something gnawing away in the back of their heads. There's something when they put their head on the pillow at night. God put an eternity in their hearts. They can't have faith in that. And so um, what happens is is, uh, we don't have have the, 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 the spirit of fear. We have the Holy Spirit. It's a whole different thing. It's not religion. It's a relationship. Watch this. But you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, and we can include and daughters, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. So God becomes our Father the moment we believe in Christ and we receive Christ, and the Holy Spirit helps us. He gives you the revelation that God is your dad, he's your father. I remember being in Vanuatu on a mission trip, and everybody said they called God Papa God. It was so beautiful. Every prayer was Papa God, Papa God, because they knew it's all about intimacy with Christ. It's not, it's not being... Uh, sacrilegious, it's, it's realizing I've got a father that loves me in heaven and I can trust him. So the Holy Spirit actually helps you know that you can cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. That's what the Holy Spirit does as he intercedes for you. Watch this. Jump down to verse 26 because it says, likewise, watch, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Anybody ever feel weak? Oh, like only, a th- I don't know, maybe a tenth of you? Well, you're all that in a bag of chips, huh? You're really strong. You're really tough. You're bad, man. We're impressed. Um, so we are, we're, he helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray as we ought. Anybody been there? I don't even know what to pray. I don't know how to pray. Guess what? He's got you covered. It says, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words, and he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit. So God is searching hearts. He knows the mind of the Spirit. So together, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, and and the Father hears those prayers because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So you may be asking for things outside of the will, and and. And we tend to do that. We, can't, we always need to be like Jesus. He said, I'm only going to do the works I see my Father doing. If you pray outside of the will of God, then you're, you're not going to get an answer for that. But what happens is the Holy Spirit brings a correction. Did you ever text? text you got auto, who's got autocorrect? autocorrect? Have you ever seen what you've written the first time? And you, Voice texting is the worst. Man, you could say words that you never say. Or you never meant to say, but if you got autocorrect, hopefully it goes toward your good, but autocorrect. The Holy Spirit autocorrects when you, when you mess up, but we need to become mature in Christ because God wants us to pray according to his will. How do we know what God's will is? The word of God, period. Don't add or subtract. 
You want to know God's will? You got to know his word. And when you pray according to his word, you're praying according to his will. And God will give you. Jesus said, ask, it shall be given to you. Uh, Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. He's going to, when you're abiding in Christ, you will ask what you will. And it will be given to you because you're abiding in Christ. So uh, prayer, this is warfare prayer we're talking about. Um. So this, the Holy Spirit, Jesus is praying, and he's helping us in our prayers. But watch this. As you pray, Ephesians 2.18 says this. For through him, Christ, we have access into one spirit to the Father. Here's a point I want to make. Beyond the Holy Spirit uh, praying for you, God doesn't want you to, to just to let Jesus and the Holy Spirit. God is calling you to pray. God, you know, the Bible says, I want men everywhere to lift holy hands in prayer. Jesus said, uh, Men, you, men ought to pray and never give up. Never give up. This is where, where it separates the men from the boys is when you don't get your prayer answered when you think you're like, that's it, I'm not going to pray anymore. No, be a, be a man. Keep praying. Be a woman of God. Keep praying. How, well, a week went by, so what? Keep praying. A month went by, two years went by, keep praying. Ten years went by, keep praying. Twenty years Keep praying. 50 years. My uncle, it took 50 years of my dad praying for him before he became a Christian. Do not quit on your prayers and your faith. Keep praying in Jesus' name at all times with all kinds of prayer. So anyways, we wound up uh, with a church in 2002. Started with 60 people. Next year it went to 100. The year after that it went to 150. The year after that it went to 180. Then it broke into the 200s. And then then it broke into 250. And it was growing 20% a year. And uh, now we are collectively with with in-person and online regular, real, like committed viewers. We are a church of 1,100 people in Plymouth. Now watch this. This is why we needed to do warfare prayer. Because in Plymouth, the history, this is cool for you guys to know, the history in Plymouth is that all the way from 1620 until 2004-ish, 5-ish, no evangelical gospel-centered church ever went beyond 200 people in a town of 50,000 people. So we knew, who were we, right? We're nothing, but who is God? Forget about me. Who is God? What is God able to do? And here's what happened. The churches usually broke because somebody was offended. Gossip took over. Division took over. Just, it was nasty. It wasn't like people were on a mission for the commission. You know, somebody told me, if you stop fishing, you start fighting. What does that mean? Jesus said, you go and be fishers of men. Go reach people for the gospel. Bring people to Jesus. The moment you stop fishing, you start going inward, you get political. Politics have never been a part of this church. We don't care about labels and names. It's not like, hey, listen, I'm the lead senior pastor. You better do everything I say. Caleb's like, I'm an associate. I'm an associate. I had had a relative that would always, I'd say, oh, you're his assistant pastor. No, I'm an associate pastor. I'm an associate. Get that right. I'm a deacon. How about that one? I'm a deacon. Yeah. Who cares? You know what deacon means? Diakono, serve. You're a servant. Just say, I serve Jesus, and I love to serve his people. Who cares what your label is, right? Associate. (laughs) Sorry, that just struck me funny. Um, Pray at all times. Just keep praying. You know, when I go and I do the police academy, I can't believe I have five minutes left. This is disgusting. Um, (laughs) So when I when I, I, I get to do all the police the, the I do the police academy graduations I'm so honored I love our law enforcement I, every time I see them I say thank you for your work I have so much respect for you so uh, now there's about sixty or so fifty or however many graduates it's a two sometimes two and a half hour ceremony i'm up on the stage at memorial hall there's about 1200 people looking at you i'm with the dignitaries i'm with the you know the state politicians and the sheriff and the police chiefs and we're all sitting up there and i'm usually in the front row and i'm going okay two and a half hours i know what i'm going to do 
Every single time they call each one by name, they take a, a, a walk, they go get pinned. I start interceding for every one of them. Too early for the keyboards, but keep it going. It sounds nice in the background. Um, I love you, Ben Sullivan. You're the best. I love you, man. Um, so <laughs> you're like, same old, same old. You know what? When, when you pray, I know when I pray, something's going to happen in their lives. Every police officer gets prayed over. And I, I throw it, if I have time, I'm throwing in extras for them, family, whatever, that they could know Jesus, that they could be, if they're not, that they'd be born again, God would protect them. There's so many times when we pray all the time. Second one is pray all kinds of prayers. There's prayers of adoration or worship. You should always start there. Talk to God about how much you love him. List his attributes. God, you're all knowing, you're um. You're omniscient. You're all powerful. You are the creator. You're my God. You saved me. You're my savior. Lord, I praise you because, Lord, you created all things. And God, you sustain all things. I thank you. Just praise you. There's prayers of worship. That's prayer of worship. There's prayers of confession. Man, how many of you? I'm praying these prayers a lot. Confession. The Bible says, if you confess your sins, 1 John 1, 9, he is faithful to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Wow, I need that one. Am I alone? So, like if a thought goes a little too far and I let it lodge too much, a temptation becomes more of a, I say, oh, nope, 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 nope. In Jesus' name, Father, forgive me for that. I, I allowed that to happen too much. God, forgive me for my attitude, for the way um, I spoke to my wife. Uh, Lord, forgive me, Lord, for getting too angry. Do you ever push the button when somebody gives you an email and you, you create this really ven vengeance-oriented email and you're like, it feels so good, and you just go. Then you hear that voice, don't, don't hit send. And you're like, no, too bad, because I'm so mad, I just got to get this. And then you hit send and you go, oh my gosh, the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you. But I do that a lot less now. Um, but, you know, like there's all these little moments, right, where we need to ask God to forgive us. And prayers of thanksgiving, 73 times in the Bible it says, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks to the Lord, give thanks. You know, it's the antidote for discontentment. It's the antidote to negativity. When you spend more time giving thanks for all the little things and the big things, constant. Man, if you're just going around murmuring, that word murmur says it all, murmur. Like, just that murmuring is you just uttering negativity. How you doing? Ah, I'm not really good. I can't stand my boss. My job stinks. And uh, I had, I, you know, my basement flooded. Whatever it is. Like, we just, 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 we can make corrections by simply thanking God, even for the trials that we're going through. Because all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purposes. So even that works out good. So thank you, God. Prayer of faith. Uh, it says that, if anyone is sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church, anointing them with oil, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And we see a lot of people getting healed around here. So we, we, we love to pray that kind of prayer. We pray prayers of deliverance because God's... See, we're, we're, we're under attack here. So that's why we're calling these warfare prayers because when we pray for others and go to battle for them with intercession, we're actually... You should see it all the time. All the time. Healings all the time. People who are allowing Satan to attack their minds, their thoughts even the spirit of infirmity that can come on you, a sickness that was not derived from natural means, but from a demonic. Every one of those, we can pray those prayers and people are getting delivered and healed and saved all the time at New Hope because all those things are what Jesus commissioned us to do. So we must pray. And along with that is a prayer of authority. God, Jesus gave us authority. He said, you have authority. All authority has been given to me. I give you authority to tread on the scorpions and the serpents. That is any demonic thing going on. You don't have to put up with all the stuff that, that the enemy is throwing at you. No, you have the shield of faith and you have the power of your prayer. Paul listed prayer as a very important. Prayer gets the most uh, attention. 
we're going to talk about the next section. It gets the most wording, the most verses, more than shield of faith, more than anything, more than the sword of the Spirit. It's prayer, because prayer is what dismantles the kingdom of Satan. It literally dislodges strongholds. You can, through your prayers, when you pray prayers of authority on areas that your life is being attacked, you can step in to the authority Christ has given you. And I'm spitting everywhere, but who cares? Um, and begin to let the authority Christ gave you to say, no, I'm not going to listen to that temptation. No, I'm not going to listen to the lie that I'm not a child of God. No, I'm not going to listen to the condemnation because Christ has delivered me from condemnation. You just attack it at every moment. Listen, God is building an army here. These are things, these are things that you have to do. Uh, every army has soldiers. So don't, if you're a soldier out in the battlefield, you're not going to just stand there while everyone's attacking you with with all kinds of weapons no you're armed prayer is your best armor and we believe that in Plymouth County we have been praying and we're dislodging the strongholds that once had free reign around here and we're saying nope we're not going to deal with that anybody with me on that um, prayer of supplications interceding for people all the time now so you pray with all prayers number three you pray with all perseverance all perseverance. The enemy is always on the prowl to destroy what God wants to do in your life. So pray with watchful. Why do we pray all the time with all prayers, with all perseverance? Because the enemy is always trying to seek and devour. Be sober, be vigilant for your adversary, the devil, uh, roameth about seeking whom he can devour. The Bible says, and this is a very uh, offensive word, military word, he says, resist him steadfast in the faith. What are you doing letting him lie to you? Bringing up your old past. What are you doing thinking that you're worthless? What is that all about? You're just opening the floodgates for him to come in and lie. No, you say, I am a child of God. I have been saved. I've been bought with, his, with the blood of Jesus Christ. I am not my own. I'm bought with a price. I am justified. I am sanctified and I'm on the process of being glorified and I'm on my way to heaven and God is with me. I don't care who's against me because he's with me. Pray all kinds, with all prayers, with all perseverance. Don't quit. You know, I heard someone say, much prayer, little counsel. But little prayer, much counsel. In other words, the, if you pray little, you're going to go to all kinds of people for counsel. I've seen it, and I love everyone, and I understand, but, but we can grow beyond this, where they go to this one for advice, to this one for counsel, for this one because of that, for this one. But you know what? Before you go to the throne, go, I mean, before you go to the phone, go to the throne of God and ask Him to help you in your time of need, because the Bible says that we come boldly before the throne of grace for help, for mercy, for grace in our time of need. For help in our time of need. He will help you. This God is not some fairy tale. This is a real God who will help you with real power, with real strength, with real resources. He will come and save you at the point where you need to be saved and delivered. Amen? Amen. So you pray for your family. You pray for your marriage. You pray for your church. You pray for your career at all points. You're praying with perseverance. We don't give up. And the last one, pray for all saints. Say that with me. Pray for all saints. All right, this is good. When you pray for all saints, that means nobody's excluded. Of course, you can't know the names of two billion people around the planet. But here's how, what, here's how you can know your condition before God. If there's people in your life that you're holding a grudge and you're, you're, you're feeling really good that you're bitter and you're keeping in that them in that that doghouse that little prison of unforgiveness jesus said pray for your enemies now this is something i want you to go away with here it's powerful sometimes we create a little hobby of allowing our hearts to stay bitter angry unforgiving about certain people you see them you just walk the other way now, I'm not saying that you should enter into toxic, unhealthy things, but I'm saying to guard your heart. And so when we pray for others, especially those that we don't want to pray for, 
That is the antidote to narcissism. Narcissism is one of the biggest plagues that ever hit America. When people are narcissistic, it creates a vulnerability toward the attack of Satan on a nation. Our nation is narcissistic. One way that you can overcome narcissism is start to pray for a lot of people that you know, that you love, and even people that you don't like very much. Start going to your knees on their behalf. And I'm going to give you something I really would like you to remember. All right, you ready? Some of you might want to jot it down. Prayer produces intimacy. To the one you're praying to, you need an intimate relationship with God. The one you're praying for and the one you're praying with. (laughs) You say, well, our marriage has grown apart, right? There's a big wall up. I've I've had people tell me, we haven't had sexual intimacy in three years. That's not good. We, you know, never the toes shall touch under the covers. Like, that's not good. Prayer, pray together. Pray together, not just some rote quick thing. Cancel everything you had for that night. Put away the phone. Talk together, pray together. The Lord's going to heal your marriage. He's going to heal that relationship. He's going to heal it, but you've got to let go of unforgiveness and forgive. Here's the thing. You ready? Um, Agreement is the place of power. Disagreement brings powerlessness in your life. Remember when Job's friends, they were just so, it was just like, who wants, with, with, with friends like that, I mean, come on. Who needs enemies? You ever hear the term frenemies? I mean, these guys were saying all kinds of stuff. Wait till you hear this. Wait till you hear this verse. Job 42.10. Are you ready? And I'm going to say this because there, if you have unforgiveness and you're, you're the, the devil does division, God does multiplication. The devil divides. He loves to divide. I know my family was destroyed through divorce. It's the worst thing ever. That's why I like to protect the unity of our church and our family. 43 years uh, this Wednesday married to this beautiful woman down here. Right? We both, we both went through broken divorce families. That's another example how your past never has to dictate your future, ever. Um, so I want to give you the story of Job because you, you, there might be a big old blockage in your life where God wants you to advance, but you're holding on to unforgiveness an attitude towards someone else. Jesus died for them, just like he died for you. His blood was sufficient for them too, you know. So it says this, Job 42.1, And the Lord restored, what? The fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends. What? And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. When he prayed for people that weren't necessarily acting as the friends should act. He prayed for them. He released all that bitterness. He released. All. I'm telling you, miracles happen when we get in line with God. And God won't. He, God will not hear the prayers of people that love division. If you love division, you're right in the enemy's camp. You've got to hate division and love unity. Unity in your family. Unity in your marriage. Unity in your church. If someone gossips about another person in this church, you tell them. You know, one time. One time somebody kept telling me about this person and you know, this, you know, they're doing this, they're doing that. And I'm like, I've been telling you, go get reconciled. Go tell them how you feel. Go. Nope, they wouldn't do it. They'd rather talk to everybody else. I said, come here, let's go. I brought them right over to the person and I said, you guys need to talk. They talked for the first time in months. There was forgiveness and reconciliation. What the devil bound up was released in the moment. Forgiveness releases unforgiveness binds there's power in agreement power this disagreement brings powerlessness you got that well god's about to do some miracles in your life 